Hi, I'm Ant Gray. And I'm Fiona Burrows, and we're both learning skills advisors here at UWA. But we've also both been undergrad students here at UWA. And on top of that, we've been tutors as well, so we've marked a lot of essays. So we thought we'd do something a bit different today um, and just have a bit of a conversation about some of the things that students can do to improve their writing and give it more impact. So we thought we'd start by talking about this idea of what academic writing has to be. And there seems like there's a bit of a myth with academic writing. People believe that it has to be complex and difficult and technical, quite hard to understand. To start off, I thought we'd look at a piece of students' writing. And, and this essay starts off, Jean Baudrillard's central position is that society now lives in an era of the hyperreal, having enacted the disappearance of the real through successive phases of simulation, and, and it goes on. So what do you think about this? Well, I mean, I think this sounds quite impressive. Um, it, you know, there's lots of complex words in there. But reading it, I mean, I really don't know what it actually means. I can't work out what this person's trying to say, really. The terrible thing about this piece of writing is, is the, the worst part is it's actually my writing from when I was an undergrad in um, my first or second year. And yeah, kind of looking back on it now, I, I really can't tell you, I wrote this, but I can't tell you what the actual essay is about. So it kind of, it makes me wonder, you know, why would you choose to write like this? And I think the first reason why we, we choose to write in this kind of complex way is that it sounds academic. It sounds like it's worthy of getting high marks. But really, it's really difficult to actually understand what it's talking about. The other reason why you might want to write like this is it, it just fills up space. You know, there's lots of complex um, clauses and long sentences and stuff like that. So it's pretty you know, it, it doesn't take very long to actually fill up your word limit. And there's one more reason why students tend to write like this, um, and I know this is something that I did as a student as well, and that's, it's almost as a sort of disguise for a lack of ideas. So if you're not feeling confident in what you're saying and you write it in this really complex and difficult way, it's almost as though you're defending yourself against anyone criticising it because, you know, you're assuming that they can't actually understand what you're trying to say. And Winston Churchill once said, this report by its very length defends itself against the risk of being read. And I think that this is what a lot of students do in their writing. They write in this complex, difficult manner to try and defend themselves against the risk of criticism. So what we're going to talk about today is how to write more concisely and more accurately. And the reasons for doing this is that both you and your reader are going to understand the material better. So if you understand the material better through your writing, it's going to be easier to write. And kind of in this way, it makes thinking and writing a whole lot easier. And finally, it forces you to consider what you really want to say. When I was a student, a lot of the time I would sit down and just write without actually knowing what I was even trying to say. So if you write in a simple way and a concise way, it really forces you to question what your main point is and what you're actually trying to get across to the reader. So today we're not going to talk about good or bad writing. Instead, what we're going to talk about is strong and weak writing. Weak writing is, it's hard to read and understand, the language is unnecessarily complex, and basically it's just plain tiresome to read. And I know this because we've all read stuff that's, that's very overly complex and just been kind of plain bored by it or disengaged from it. And I've also experienced this marking student essays. You know, you'll read essay after essay and then occasionally you'll get that one essay that comes along which is written really clearly and concisely. And it's actually a pleasure to read. It's actually enjoyable to read. So strong writing, on the other hand, is writing that's really clear. It's really easy to read. It's also authoritative in that it tells the reader exactly what you're trying to tell them. It doesn't hide things. It doesn't make things unnecessarily complex. And it's also really energising. It's pleasurable to read. It doesn't make you feel tired by the end of it. And ultimately, people respect good writing. It shows that the author is trying to really engage with the reader and really trying to communicate something to them. So I like to think about it in this way. Complex ideas, but simple writing. So just because your writing is simple and concise, that doesn't mean that your ideas have to be simple. And at university, you're expected to come up with complex ideas and unique ideas. But if you can express these in a simple and clear way, then you're going to be showing much more respect for your reader. 
I really like this quote that talks about the art of writing being the art of discovering what you believe. And that's what, as students, we're doing here at university. We're discovering what we believe and what we think through our writing. And being able to write clearly and simply is not something you can do in a day. It's something that you have to work on. So here are Study Smarter's three top tips for improving your writing. First, simplify. Second, tell the story. And third, practice and emulate. So let's start with simplifying your writing. Einstein once said that everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And I think this is a really good way of thinking about your writing. I love this quote because um, that's not actually what Albert Einstein says, but that's how everyone remembers what he said. What he actually said was, it can scarcely be denied that the supreme goal of all theory is to make the irreducible basic elements as simple and as few as possible without having to surrender the adequate representation of, of a single datum of experience. But I, you know, I realise why people only remember this, because it says exactly the same thing, but it says it far more beautifully. So this is what you need to do with your writing. You need to reduce everything down to as simple as possible, but no simpler. So we're going to give you a few tips and techniques to make your writing simpler and more concise. So this is a great quote from Paul Sylvia. He said, your first draft should sound like they were hastily translated from Icelandic by a non-native speaker. And this is a really great description of what my first draft sounded like as a student. But even now when I try and write, and I've had a lot of experience with writing and even teaching writing, I still find that when I write a first draft, it, it just sounds horrible. It doesn't sound like the perfected, clear, concise writing that I want it to be. And the thing is, that's okay, because everyone's first drafts sound pretty horrible. These are some examples of famous first drafts uh, from authors such as George Orwell and John Updike. And you can see there's lots of mistakes, there's lots of crossing out, there's lots of things that need to be changed. So it's really important to understand that your first draft doesn't have to ever be perfect, and it's not going to be perfect. So the thing is, don't get caught up in, in how your first draft sounds. Writing is a process of constant revision. And I think the easiest way for me to look at my work and start revising it is I almost have, I'm, I'm always having to tell myself, write like a normal person. And I usually print out my work and read it out aloud as well because I can tell whether things make sense or not by hearing it rather than just reading it. So there's a couple of ways that you can simplify your writing. First of all, you should split any sentences that sound really long or convoluted. And if you read your work aloud, you can hear these. They're the ones that you have to take a big breath to get through. It's a really good idea to have variation in your writing. So the occasional longer sentence is fine. But vary this with shorter sentences as well, because they're easier for the reader to understand. You can also apply this to the words that you're using. If you use short words with less syllables, it gives your writing more flow. Another thing you can do is remove words that are redundant or doubled. And this is something that we often do unconsciously. Put in two words that mean the same thing. And if you can go through and remove these from your writing, it will really make it much more concise. Another mistake that a lot of students make is using cliches in their writing. And I know as a tutor, any time I read an essay that used the words, at the end of the day, it made me cringe inside. So try to remove these from your writing. And finally, you can go through your writing and add any missing signposts. So things that help the reader to understand what it is you're trying to say. Things like your thesis statement, your topic sentence and linking words. So let's look at a few examples. A good rule is to use a single word instead of a whole phrase. So rather than something like this, at this point in time, you could basically just say now. Or something like this, in a situation in which could just be when or due to the fact that is just because. The same goes with where you can use one word instead of two. So I'm always finding these in my own writing. So you see something that says like advanced planning or brief summary, necessary requirement, complete monopoly, armed gunman, free gift. All of these phrases we hear, especially in news reporting all the time. There's no need to say advanced planning. All planning is in advance. There's no need to say a brief summary. It's just a summary. The same with a free gift. What gift isn't free? If you have to pay for it, it's not a gift. 
Another thing you can do is replace negatives with affirmatives and this is going to give your writing much more impact. So instead of saying something is not the same, say it's different. Instead of saying not many, say few. Another thing you can do is replace any informal phrases or idioms and these are things that we might use in everyday speech but which don't really belong in academic writing. So instead of saying check out or look into, you should say examine. Instead of saying figure out or find out, you can say determine. And these are easy things you can do to make your writing clearer and give it more authority. So let's try it out. We've got a sentence here and we're just going to try and put some of the things we've been talking about into practice. So it says, It is evident that a great many newly arrived international exchange students undergo a difficult period of transition where they experience the trauma of being isolated and lost in a strange and unfamiliar foreign culture. I think there's a lot of room here to edit this, this sentence. Yeah, it's quite complex and quite long-winded, isn't it? I'm sure there's a simpler way of saying this. So let's just start at the start. Um, it is evident that a great many... I can, I can tell that we can do some editing there. I think you could just take that out altogether. Many newly arrived international exchange students. So that seems like a good place to start. Hmm. But, I mean, maybe we could even make that more concise. How could we say that in a, in a simpler way? So maybe it could just be many new. So many new international exchange students. That's quite wordy, isn't it? Yeah, and I think there's a little bit of confusion here. I mean, international students and exchange students are two different demographics. Um, so maybe at this point, whoever's writing this has to decide whether they're talking about international students or they're talking about exchange students. Let's just choose for the moment that we're talking about exchange students. So then we'll look at the next part of the sentence. Undergo a difficult period of transition. What do you think about this? Well, I guess this is one of those examples where you're using a phrase where you could just replace it by a simple word. Um, instead of saying period of transition, why don't you just say transition? Great. So now let's look at the next bit, where they experience the trauma of being isolated and lost. I feel like this could be condensed down as well. So experience the trauma of being isolated and lost. I mean, why don't we just say they feel isolated? Great. So let's look at the last part of the sentence. A strange and unfamiliar foreign culture. Strange and unfamiliar basically just sound like the same, communicating the same thing to me. Maybe instead of that, we could just simply say, pick one of them in an unfamiliar culture. So now that we've made all these changes, let's, let's look at, at what effect it's what effect it's had. So I'll read, I'll read the original version to you. It is evident that a great many newly arrived international exchange students undergo a difficult period of transition where they experience the trauma of being isolated and lost in a strange and unfamiliar culture. And this is the version that we edited. Many new exchange students undergo a difficult transition where they feel isolated in an unfamiliar culture. So, I mean, which one do you think sounds stronger? The edited version just sounds so much better. It's so much more clearer, it's more concise, and it's more authoritative. So let's move on to our second top tip, and that's telling the story. So stories are really important to us as humans, and Philip Pullman said they're one of the things that we need most in the world. We use stories to understand abstract concepts, things like history and science, and even ourselves. You know, we construct our memories through narrative. And I think this is a really good way of looking at writing as well. So let's look at these two examples. One of these examples, they both basically say the same thing, but one tells a story better than the other. So the first example starts, dark matter, the nature of gravity, new super galaxies and the beginnings of the universe are examples of areas for future exploration by the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder Radio Telescope. So that's one example. Here's the second one. The Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder Radio Telescope will explore dark matter, the nature of gravity, new super galaxies and the beginnings of the universe. One of these sentences tells a story better than the other. Which, which one do you think? Well, personally, I prefer the second one. It just seems much clearer and it tells me what's happening in a much more direct way. I think the reason why we prefer the second sentence is that it in introduces the important elements straight up. And people often talk about this in terms of subject, verb and object order in their sentence structure. But I think there's an easier way to describe this process. And that's by 
talking about it in terms of character, what action is happening, and then adding the rest of the detail at the end. So if you look at the example that we looked at before, the character is the radio telescope. The action is what it's doing, it's exploring, and then there's the rest of the detail. So I know when I was a tutor marking essays, I found that a lot of people had a tendency to change the natural order of words or sentences. And I used to call this Yoda speak. So putting the important information at the end. And this is really hard to read. It makes it harder for your reader to follow what you're saying. So let's have a look at another example. Having tormented her for a number of years, the wolf was sued by Little Red Riding Hood for harassment. So this sentence is not too bad, but let's try and tell this story a little bit better by using the ideas of character, action and detail. So the first thing to do is identify who the main character of this sentence is. Well, there's two options. It's either the wolf or Little Red Riding Hood, but I think it's Little Red Riding Hood because she's the one who's doing the action, which is suing the wolf. And then you can add the rest of the detail for harassment after years of torment. So now we've got that complete sentence. The Little Red Riding Hood sued the wolf for harassment after years of torment. It sounds a lot simpler and it, it really tells the story. So telling the story in your writing means identifying what the main character is and making sure it's short and specific and familiar. And then expressing the action that that character is doing as an active verb. So you'd always want to begin your sentences with main characters and actions, exactly like stories, and then add the rest of the detail later on. So let's move on to our last top tip, which is about emulating and practicing. Learning how to write well is something you can be doing all the time, not necessarily just when you're sitting down to write an essay. You might have noticed that we've used a lot of quotes throughout this screencast. And the reason for this is that it's really good to hear examples of good writing. It's really good to hear examples of writers who can express things really vividly in this memorable way. I love this quote by Margaret Atwood. I read for pleasure and that's the moment I learn the most. I think reading is one of the most important things you can do to improve your writing. And the more you read, the more you'll notice what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. So I think a great thing to do is to read not just for content but for style. And the more you read, the more you'll notice weak writing as well. Stuff that's just overly complex and difficult to understand and just doesn't really communicate to you as a reader. So while you're reading more and starting to recognise what's strong and what's weak in other people's writing, you can also start to put it in practice for yourself. Yeah, the thing is, when you're a student, you only really get to write a couple of times per semester and then you don't really have to write any other time. So I found keeping a journal was really handy for practising my writing and even doing things like revising my emails help me to improve my writing. And finally, make sure you accept feedback when other people give it to you. You know, your tutors are giving you great feedback and great tips to improve your writing. So take that on board and really put it into practice. And remember, you can always get advice from Study Smarter on your writing if you come by the ground floor of the Reed Library any weekday between 10 and 12. You can have a chat with our learning skills advisors and we can give you feedback as well. So if you want to give your writing more impact, simplify your writing as much as you can. Tell the story using characters and actions. And finally, practice as much as you can and find examples of strong writing to emulate. You can get more study tips and advice on the UWA Study Smarter website. Brought to you by UWA Student Services.